welcome to the 7pm. It's great uh, for you to be with us this evening and do say hello, maybe say hello in the comments below on YouTube or Facebook on Instagram. Um, this evening, Jay has lost his voice. <coughs> yes. So um, I'm going to do most of the talking. Uh, you're, you're, you're kind of like the extra almost today. Like normal. Not, not, not like normal. <laughs> so we hope you've had a really good week and had um, a really good bank holiday weekend. We've been away. In fact, we're on location at the moment because we didn't get to do this um, before we left. So I hope you've had a good time. We've been fossil hunting um, and it's big news. Boris Johnson got married as well this weekend. So a lot of it, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot's been happening and I hope you've had a, a great time as well. Maybe um, tell us about that in the Zoom a bit later on, what you've been up to over the bank holiday or write um, a few notes below. Also, some upcoming news. On Sunday the 27th of June, we have a 7pm social. So keep the date in your diaries. Details to follow. We'll chat about it again on Zoom afterwards. Sunday 27th of Zoom. Of Zoom. 27th of June, <laughs> we have our social. When we're not on Zoom, we're actually going to meet in person. Can't get enough. Can't get enough of Zoom, exactly. Anyway, this evening, uh, uh, we've got Anne is going to be speaking to us and we're going to have a time of worship. So I'll just say a prayer for us as we begin. Lord God, I ask that you are present with us tonight in our homes as we gather together online to worship you, to meet with you and to hear from your word. In your name. Amen.
So I know we say every week, but to have that space together um, to worship and just thank you to all those who've been willing to serve in this way in this season of lockdown. But it is one of the things I'm most excited about when we get back together and when we're able to um, hopefully sing. Hopefully that won't be too long now where we can actually be in the same place inside and sing. I can't even sing now anyway. You can't even sing there anyway. <laughs> but, you know, hopefully by then you'll have your voice back. So, yeah, and because this morning we did... Yeah, hopefully, if the weather was good, um, our first service uh, um, together in St John's and next week able to sing outside, but hopefully 7pm we'll be able to meet soon and be able to sing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, 
that's coming up uh, when the guidelines change. So let's pray for Anne as uh, she's going to be preaching to us tonight and pray for us that we're open to hear what God wants to say. Lord God, I thank you for Anne. I thank you that you've brought her to here to be part of our family, Lord. Um, I just pray now as the word that she brings from your word, Lord, I ask that you will speak to us, um, you will equip us, encourage us and challenge us through it. In your name. Amen. Over to you, Anne. Good evening, everyone. How are you? My name is Anne. I'm the new Associate Rector. You've probably heard me say that a few times now. Um, and I'm job sharing with my husband, Phil. Um, you seen us together last week if you watched the service last week um, we've just moved from Coventry and we're getting started in in our new role here and we're really looking forward to getting to know you better um, and it's going to take us time I think to remember all the names and faces but um, we really want to meet you and get to know you and um, I don't know if you remember what it's like to move house or start a new job and maybe you're going through that now too um, but it can be confusing and disorientating and in fact I think we're all experiencing quite a lot of change at the moment with the road map, road map being rolled out and the regulations on social mixing changing um, it can be quite hard to keep up and there is great joy in being able to see people again and hug people again. But there's also anxiety and a sense of constantly needing to adjust. And I think that the, God, the thing that God wants to say to us in the midst of all of this, uh, me included, is that he is our anchor. God is our anchor. And Hebrews 6 verse 13 to 20 says, When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to his heirs, to the heirs of what he promised. He confirmed it with an oath. God, this, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. And this is the key bit of the passage. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And there's so much stuff in that passage I could speak for hours. But what I want to focus on tonight is that as we hope in God, he becomes an anchor for our souls. And um, I don't know if you've seen it, you probably have, it's really common, but the Banksy um, has done a picture of hope, it's called Hope, and it's of a little girl um, reaching out to a heart balloon. And um, I'm no ARC critic, but I love that picture, but I've just been reflecting on hope recently, and I brought up this picture and I just thought, hmm, what does this picture say about hope? What is it telling us about hope? It kind of suggests that hope is something that's difficult to grasp, something that's slipped through our fingers, and maybe something for children, um, something that's naive. And maybe that's how our world views hope. But And maybe sometimes that's how we can see hope in our lives. It's just something that's just kind of intangible. But I want to replace that Banksy picture of hope with a picture um, that has come from my Jackie Grace colouring book. I don't know if you've seen them, they're great, I love it. Um, do a bit of colouring and praying. Um, it suits me really well. And it is a, this picture of this anchor um, that is, is firmly embedded into the rocks of the seabed. And um, that is the picture that God gives us of hope in this passage. God's hope is like an anchor. 
and anchors keep us a ship safe and grounded in storms. God's hope is not like a balloon slipping through your fingers. It's like a heavy, solid anchor which won't budge and will hold you tight. So I just want to say three things about God being our anchor. And the first is that an anchor keeps the boat safe in storms. God is our anchor. And what do anchors do? It stops the boat from drifting. When the storms come, it holds it safe. But the thing about an anchor is once it's doing its job, you can't actually see it. When it's deep in the bottom of the seabed, you can't see that anchor. And Romans 8 verse 24 says that hope that is seen is no hope at all. But just because you can't see something, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And we can feel the effect of the anchor in our lives, keeping us safe, even when it feels like sometimes we can't see God. And the thing is, God doesn't promise us smooth sailing. Isaiah 43 verse 2 says, when you walk through fires, you will be, not be burnt. When you walk through fires, you will not be burnt. Not if you happen upon a fire, you won't be burnt. We are to expect um, difficulties in our lives, um, but we are also can hold on to the promise that God will keep us safe. And when we turn to God, um, as we go through changes, when we turn to God in prayer, he will give us a rock to stand on when everything else is uncertain. And this hope that anchors are, that this hope as an anchor for our soul is so secure that it lasts into eternity. And this life is temporary and what is unseen is eternal. And that's where we fix our eyes. When we're going through difficulties, when we're going through changes, um, when we are unsure of what direction to go on, we can always fix our eyes on Jesus. And the Christian hope that at the end of time, God will make all things new. He will right all wrongs and we will live with him forever because of the victory that Jesus won on the cross. Now that is a hope to anchor our souls on. And the second thing I want to say about God as our anchor is that when we are anchored to God, we can be a safe harbour for others. And uh, this Hebrew passage that I read out refers all the way back to the promise that God gave to Abraham in Genesis 12, verse 2. God said to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Abraham was blessed by God to be a blessing. And this is a phrase I come back to again and again in my Christian walk. Whenever God's blessed me, it is to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. And God loves us and he wants to enjoy us to enjoy the good things that he gives us. But he also, all those blessings that he pours out on us are also to share with others and to give away. And in this way, God's blessings multiply and abound. God's hope has been mine and Phil's anchor as we've looked for a new place to minister and to call home. And I won't go into all of our journeys um, getting up to this point. I'm sure um, they'll come out throughout the, uh, the time we get to know you. But you are an answer to our prayers. And we have felt so blessed by this community already. And we know that God's purpose for us is also to bless others. We are blessed to be a blessing and we pray that we will be a blessing to you. So as we anchor ourselves in Jesus, we will find a safe, we will provide a safe harbour for those around us in the storms of life and help them to anchor themselves to God as well and find safety in him. And the final thing I want to say about God being our anchor is that our anchor is secure in Jesus alone. Only our hope is not in material things or feelings or relationships or people, but our hope is in the maker of our soul. It is an eternal hope that cannot be stolen because it is hidden in Jesus. When you go through periods of change, as we are, it's tempting to look for security in the things that we know. 
or into the past or to look to the past and um my daughter um ella she has the most amazing room in our new house but she still misses her box room because it is familiar to her and that's natural but the trouble is when we put our anchor in something that can be taken away we find ourselves we can find ourselves cut adrift when change comes and jesus offers us a rock on which to build our lives which will stand firm even to the end. As a community, when we anchor ourselves to Jesus, rather than relying on anything or anyone else, we will find unity and stability through changes. And this community has gone through so many changes with uh, meeting in online and coming out of lockdown, the changes keep coming. But as we daily put our identity in being a follower of Jesus, rather than in what we own or where we meet or what we do, we'll find maturity and strength. So let's continue to anchor ourselves to Jesus and hold on to his hope, because God's word for us is that he is our anchor. We who have fled to God for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. So I'd love to just invite the Holy Spirit and pray for us um, that God would help us to anchor our souls to him and find that peace and security in him alone. So let's pray. Lord, we just pray that you would send your Holy Spirit now to fall upon us. Wherever we are. And Lord, we just want to say sorry when we've put our hope in the wrong places. When we've trusted in things that aren't you and they've let us down. Pray that you come and bring your healing in those places. And Lord, we pray for those people who are feeling anxious at the moment. It's really normal response to change. Lord, we pray that you come by your Holy Spirit and fill us with your peace. We pray that you would help us to trust in you. That you would stir hope in our hearts. Thank you, God, that you are with us, that you are our anchor and that you hold us firm. Amen. And we're going to move into a time of worship now.
that time again when we get to get, gather on zoom talk about what we did over the bank holiday talk about the things that Anna's bought this evening just catch up with each other generally so time to put the kettle on you can get a lem sip <laughs> yes. absolutely we'll see you in three see you.